Cross Beats Production What's going on? You're here with Nate28 and this is Cross Beats Production. So I want to give you guys a quick overview of this plugin. I'm not going to go through all of the features because it would take too long to do that. Um, there are some key features which I'll go over and show you that and uh, do the best I can to show you kind of what it does and explain to you uh, my thoughts on it as well. So this plugin is called Scalar. It's by Plugin Boutique, as you can see. Um, I'll just show you a cool thing as well. It obviously expands, um, which is not every single plugin does that. So it's quite handy to be able to do that. So um, some of the features that it has, uh, I didn't think at the start when I first saw it, it would that it would be you know such a fantastic plugin and such a great inspirational grabber and creator um, in that regard. So let me go over some of the things. So the detect function here, obviously if you're playing and you're a really good player, um, you can play into this plugin and record the detections of each note that you play or chord or whatever it is that you're playing and it will create a uh, collection of those. So if I was going to say, for example, play some keys here. It kind of tells you what kind of key you're playing in. So you can hit stop and then you've got, you have an idea then uh, that I was in the key of A minor scale. Uh, it also has some other variations as to what it thinks you may be in as well. Um, but it tries to pull the closest to what you're in. Um, that's one function that you can use. So if you're a really good player already, um, you could use, or sorry, if you know a good player, you could use them to play into this plugin and then use some of the chords that they've got, uh, record them and drop them down into your MIDI selection here. So that's one function that it has, and that's just a really cool function in itself. The other thing here as well, if you play the notes, you can see at the top, uh, I'll just zoom in on that, it tells you what chord you're playing in. So that's really cool if you're trying to learn and you're you're really good at playing by ear and you want to actually play the chords and know what they are. Um, this is cool to do that as well. So Logic does something like that as well because I used to be a Logic guy. I had I had kind of started on Logic and went through all that and then got to Studio One. I really like Logic. I still use it every once in a while, but Studio One is my main door of choice. Anyway, so it has that. So you can clear that if you wanted to, and that's the first section there. So detect. The next is scales, which if you guys know, obviously each scale, uh, it's a certain key in a scale, so you can play C or D or whatever you want to play, E, A. Uh, so you've got, you've got all these scales here you can choose from, which is pretty much endless, um, or not endless, but it's got a lot of selection there. Uh, Phrygian is one of the scales that I like to use uh, to create a kind of exotic, like it says here, you know, it's got a Latin, lively sort of sound to it. Um, you can do a lot of crazy stuff with this if you just look through all the scales and you use those as your uh, motivation. Uh, the, ex the next thing there, it's got all of these uh, which have already been pre sort of set up by different artists and they've created chords within that genre of music. And this is kind of cool because I've used this. Actually, I'll just go on to that uh, so you can see what's going on. So it gives you a selection of notes that you can use to play in and you can choose obviously the key as well. So if you wanted a jazzy, bluesy kind of sound, then obviously B, Dorian mode would be the, the one you'd choose. Um, other things, you know, you can choose whatever you want, really. There's a whole selection of those down there. Uh, so the next thing you'd want to know then, if you're looking at getting this, uh, say, you, for example, you're playing some of these chords here and you want to have the sound go into your door, the thing you can do here is one of two things. You can pull the, the actual MIDI straight into the door there like that uh, and play it out. Um, that's one way of doing it, removing that track. And all the other option is if you like to set up the chords in, say, for example, a, a four chord structure um, and you're just messing around with it, um, that gives you the ability to then listen to it and drop it down the bottom here. So what I've done is I've dropped in this four chord structure here and I've exported the MIDI. So if you hit this export MIDI bu button right there, it can ex export it out and it will be straight into your DAW of choice, whatever that is. And for the actual tempo that I've got, I only did a two bar loop. So what I did is I put down the Alt key and dragged it across and extended it out to the full length of five, uh, one full four bar count. Uh, so that's one option that you've got as well. So that's another way of getting inspiration. And I'll show you this kind of inspiration that I've created already in just a second. But 
The other option then you've got here is artists. So you can choose all the different artists that they've used to create different chord structures and just go through all of those. And then you've got the user function to import your own chord sets as well. Uh, so that's the four uh, or five main things that it does there, just as an overview. The crazy thing then it gets down here is the chord variations and also the voicing. So you can change all of these different voicings that you can see available to you. And you've got variations to the chords. And then you've got the straight uh, diatonic chords that you can see. Now, I'm not that good when it comes to music theory. I didn't study any real music theory when I was growing up in music. I, I kind of skipped over that. And I always just went by ear. And that's probably partly my problem why, why now I'm relying on some of these plugins that come out now as well. Um, Studio One has the quarter tool, which is a good tool if you want to get uh, some creative stuff going on. But for Studio One... In the sense of a standard tool, it's probably not the best, um, I guess, tool of inspiration if you're looking at just being really creative and also knowing then what chords you've got. I think the awesome thing, though, with um, with this plugin that I've got, Scalar, um, the awesome thing inside of Studio One that I'm sure that other doors do or that can do, um, like Ghost Notes and stuff like that, but the cool thing in here is what I did, I set up this four-bar loop that I've got. I'll just play this to you right now. All right, so it's a kind of a really cool jazzy chord uh, set in, uh, I think it was B Phrygian. It was, uh, sorry, Dorian, sorry, B, B Dorian. And what I did then, I knew because of the, the tool, I'll just go back to it again, because of the tool, I knew it was in Dorian mode and it was in B, the key of B. So what I was able to do with Studio One, and if you can do this in other DAWs if you use them, but if you guys are Studio One users like I am, uh, you can set this to be on scale mode and put that into straight into B and then change it to Dorian. You've got it there, then you can hit this little tick box and it'll have all the keys along your key uh, board there. You can see that it's all lit up in blue. The ones that are actually fit, that'll fit that scale. So then what I did then to create the baseline is I pretty much just drew in this baseline and I did it by ear just to kind of match up what I thought sounded good. Uh, one tip that I would recommend if you're playing bass lines even on the keyboard and you want to hear it at a higher pitch, um, what I usually do, sometimes anyway, is I play it further up in the keyboard. So uh, so say I'm further up in the keyboard and I want to play my bass, uh, what I would do then is just highlight everything further up in the keyboard and go through the bass notes in a higher octave so I kind of uh, hear the matching on my instrument. You don't have to do this, it's just something I do. And I'll play this to you, show you what it sounds like. So that's the start of this beat. I mean, I haven't really done anything other than pull some really cool creative chords from the Scalar tool. And because I know the key I'm in now, I can just add anything to it. Like this is really awesome for guys like me, at least anyway, who don't have all the music experience in the world and probably honestly don't really have the time to learn a lot of it. I would like to, but it's hard when you've got other things you've got to work around as well. Um, but anyway, I, I think you guys should check this out. The only one thing I can say, though, for Studio One at this stage is the CPU usage on this plugin. For some reason, I get spikes when I when I use this particular plugin. I don't know why. I've reached out to them to ask the question, and I'll see if they come back with an answer for that. But apart from that, if you want to use something that gives you inspiration, uh, creativeness, and um, just gets you straight into the mode, this is probably the plugin to hit up. I think, you know, other plugins that are available, for example, in Reason, they've got their little chord creator tool that they've got. Um, that's a pretty cool um, plugin as well, but that's if you've got Reason and I don't have Reason. I don't use Reason. I've demoed it before, but anyway, long story. Anyway, the this, this, tool, this tool I think is fantastic, especially as well for learning the chords that you want to learn um, you, because you can see what's being going, you know, what's going on with them and uh, creating inspiration. So anyway, if you guys like this video, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as per usual. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.